Hello all. Uh, welcome back to the session number two. Uh, so uh, now we have a list of six different talks on different subjects and different interesting ideas which people have been carrying out. So the first talk is by Mirjana Mal uh, Malabing, uh, no, Malaring. Am I pronouncing right or am I wrong? Can you help me with your pronouncing? Yes, I'm Mirjana Malaric. Oh, Mirjana uh, Malaric. Okay, yes. uh, uh, welcome to the session, Mirjana. So Mirjana is going to do a, a video presentation. She, her, her talk is going to be a recorded talk. Uh, and she's going to uh, talk about the global mature network. Uh, so first I would request you to introduce yourself and then we can uh, play your video. After the video plays, uh, the group is uh, requested to ask questions or put your comments. Uh, so uh, we'll have 18 minutes of maximum talking by, uh, by your side, Mariana, and then we can have questions for two or three minutes around the about uh, from, the, uh, from the group. Over to you, Mariana. Okay, uh, presentation is about 13 and a half minutes long, so we'll have time for questions and answers and a little very short uh, survey, Menti survey. So uh, let's hear about Global Meteor Network. Thank you. Uh, should I request the IT team to play your video? Yes, yes. Uh, please play Everything. the video, Eduardo. The Global Meteor Network. Hi everybody, I'm Mirjana Malaric from Zagreb, Croatia. I work in High School Jelkovic, a vocational school for computer science and electronics. I'm graduated electrical engineer from the University of Zagreb and I have worked for a long time as a teacher in the fields of electronics and computer hardware. Astronomy has been a hobby of mine since I was a teenager, so I brought together my profession and my hobby. Besides visual and telescopic observations of celestial objects for students, my students and I work on projects in electronics for observing celestial phenomena. One of these projects is an Arduino Uno driven radiometer. We also joined the Global Meter Network, formerly the Croatian Meter Network. I'll explain to you what the Global Meter Network is and how could you involve your students or anyone else in this project. Recently, we had an opportunity to observe the most popular shower of shooting stars in the Northern Hemisphere, called the Perseids. You are seeing two examples from our GMN stations. But let me first explain some basic terms, just in case. A meteoroid is an interplanetary object with size from micrometers to several meters. When this object intersects with Earth and enters the atmosphere, it causes a meteor. If the meteoroid is big enough and slow enough, it can leave a meteorite, a rock fallen to the ground that we can find and recover. Where do meteoroids come from? There are two possible sources, asteroids and comets. Asteroids are big rocks, mostly in orbit between Mars and Jupiter. During collisions, asteroids crumble. These pieces can be ejected from orbit and some of them reach Earth's atmosphere. These larger pieces of rock cause a very bright meteor core called fireball when they enter the atmosphere. Comets have trails that produce lots of small pieces, a cloud of space dust called a meteoroid stream. If a lot of meteors can be noticed coming from the same spot in the sky during a period of time, we call that event a meteor shower. 
A meteor shower produces centimeter to millimeter side particles which have not evolved dynamically far from the orbit of their parent body. For example, the parent body for the Perseids is Comet Swift Tuttle. Why do we care? These tiny fragments can offer us a unique view on the solar system formation and evolution. Knowing more about these tiny pieces of space dust helps us in analyzing meteor showers, sporadic meteors and fireballs, as well as increasing our knowledge of the risk to Earth from larger debris. We can predict meteoroid impact risk on spacecrafts, especially satellites, or during spacewalks. Comets containing ingredients for life, for example, Rosetta Comet. Why do we need global meteor network? Meteors are very local objects since they come from a height of around 100 kilometers from Earth's surface. So if we want reliable results, we need lots of observers all around the world. A solution is to have cameras acting as a one big instrument connected in a network. Existing regional video networks either have expensive camera systems collect their data in incompatible forms, or the data are distributed after a year or so. The solution to this is multinational large-scale citizen science project, the Global Meter Network. The broad goal of GMN is to greatly expand the atmospheric coverage of video networks to a global scale permitting continuous optical observations of meters using a fully open source software and data model. A major motivator for the establishment of the Global Meter Network project is to build a distributed meter network, which is treated as a fully automated decentralized science instrument. The scientific goals of the project are the following providing the meteor community with a real-time awareness of the near-Earth meteoroid environment for publishing orbits of all observed meteors from all around the globe every morning, observing meteor showers, computing their flux, mass indices and orbits to constrain meteor shower prediction models, observing meteorite producing fireballs to increase the number of meteorites with known orbits and help constrain meteorite source regions. The system we are setting up runs on Raspberry Pi and uses a cheap security camera model. The total cost of parts for one meteor station is around $200. The parts needed are a Raspberry Pi 3 by plus or 4 computer with a case, fan and power supply, a 128GB class 10 micro SD card, and one IMX291 bare bones camera module with power cable and 5 volts power supply. It used various lenses, 3.6 mm with bigger field of view, 5 or 5.6 mm or 8 mm which is suitable for cities or 16 mm with the smallest field of view for high precision trajectories. A security camera housing and a mounting bra brackets, then two PoE injector cables and one Ethernet cable. You can also buy a plug and play system at our private industry partner Eastrastream for $400. Take a short look at the parts. The system uses transparent and open source Raspberry Pi meter station software. It is available on GitHub. Data are automatically uploaded to the global database where it is combined with data from other cameras to work out the orbit and often the origin of a meter. It may even be used to work out where a meteorite might have landed. 
The data are used to monitor meter shower rates and duration, accurately forecast the peak of the shower, as well as monitoring and predicting outbursts and plotting the radian, the point at which the shower appears to originate as seen from Earth. These systems help tracking minor meter showers, sporadic meters, fireballs and new showers. Once a camera is set up, it all happens automatically, but you can do your own analysis of data as well. All trajectory and orbit data are free and available within 24 hours after observation. <laughs> Here are some examples of the data we got. Upper left, a very dark place in, on the Canary Islands, La Palma. Upper right, one meteorite dropper in Canada where you can see a few fragmentations. Lower left, if there is a very active meteor shower, you can have more than a thousand meteors in one night per camera. Lower right, finally, an all sky camera which is not used usually for trajectory purposes because of its low resolution. And some data from our RMS camera. Despite city light pollution levels, a couple of nice meters with two fragmentations are obvious. Down, a meter shower in May named Lirids and a meter shower in January named Quadrantids. You'll notice a trace of beds and trace of an iridium satellite, which is communication satellite. We put a lot of emphasis on calibration methods. With 3.6 mm lenses, you get one arc minute of astrometric precision. Cameras are recalibrated every 10 seconds due to camera movements caused by thermal effects or wind blasts. Photometric calibration is also needed due to changes in the sky conditions. Global Meteor Network started at 1820. We now have 500 stations in 30 countries. Here is a current coverage of networks at 100 kilometers in Europe and North America. Radians shown on the slide and daily plots are available on the website. The little bright spots are individual meteor showers. The GMN observes all meteor showers that are of interest from the spacecraft impact hazard perspective, i.e. those showers which are so active that NASA monitors them and issue warnings to the satellite operators if a shower is experiencing an outburst of activity. You can scan this QR code and you'll be directed to the GMN website. The GMN project opened the development of software to, con to contributors from the general public as a citizen science project. Students or teachers are welcome to participate. Here you can see a map of the fireball trajectory observed by four GMN stations. This is an example of the application of GMN data. We examine a bright fireball lasting 6.2 seconds observed above southern Croatia. Meteorite fell weighted around 100 grams. When we calculated the location of meteorite fall, students and teachers can participate in the search and hopefully recover it. Students can build their own camera system. Instructions are available at website. We would also like to have students and teachers who would take care of the educational components of the project. Perhaps we could have an international group of student specialists who can perform things like data analysis and reduction. And you'll have support from the Global Meter Network community at Groups.io. GMN cameras can be also used for other projects like variable stars photometry, ELS and sprites observations. These are upper atmospheric optical phenomena associated with thunderstorms. Here is the meter trajectory viewer and a meter map. You can notice stations, blue dots, and fields of view of cameras. Europe and North America are well covered, but we need more cameras in the Southern Hemisphere, Africa, Southern Central America, Australasia, Oceania. 
The data collected by GMN was used as a basis for several academic publications, including the scientist at the NASA Meteoroid Environment Office. I invite you to join the Global Meteor Network by visiting the website. Thank you for your attention and if you have questions, I'm here now. Thank you, Mirjana, for sharing uh, your thoughts and your activities over the video. It was really interesting. I was really impressed by how the students can make their own cameras and they're getting involved in the researches and that re real data is uh, being generated. And it's, it's a global. I have a small question. Uh, okay, so should we put the poll on first, Mirjana? Yes. And then, yeah. So over to you. Uh, um, uh, you can try putting the poll on. Uh, if not, then we'll. Uh, can you try putting the poll on? Is, do you uh, have yes. To it? Uh, here is. Okay, wait a second. So here is a link. Mm -hmm. A little, it's very short poll. I have QR code. If I share screen, you'll see a QR code. So I think all the members can click on the link. It opens, uh, it opens up uh, something like this. It opens up a, 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 a survey and you all can fill up the survey. Um, so friends, please feel, feel free to share the, uh, the information to Mirjana. It would be useful for her. Um, and in the meantime, uh, if yes, I can see one question, which I'll ask in a bit. Mirjana, uh, uh, there's one question by Nurali. Uh, what are the requirements to join the global uh, meteor network? Uh, nothing special, just uh, goodwill. Just goodwill and you must have a uh, or $200 for components, or if you want to buy a, a system, then it's $400. Just this, not, nothing special. And you'll have all our support um, at uh, Global Meteor Network uh, page. So I copy link uh, to Global Meteor Organization. Uh, here is. So you have, uh, you, you see mailing list on this link and you can join our mailing list, ask all questions, ask for all support. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. I think uh, SN Sugamar Ayer is asking which language is the poll. I think it's, it's in English, most of it. So in the end, you need to click on the blue button after you are uh, done with the question. So, yeah. Okay. I see another uh, question. Yeah. Hi, Mohana, that was amazing. Whoop. Yeah, yes, Carl. Uh, okay. I can ask this question and then can we come to you, Carl? Please, sorry. There's a question in the audience. Is there any uh, is there quality of sky condition that is needed to join GMN? Uh, I'm sorry. So uh, Christian is asking: Is there any quality of sky condition that is needed to join GMN? Okay. No, no, no special quality because uh, our camera, school camera is in the mid of the town uh, with lots of light pollution. You even saw uh, this on our photos. So not special, just uh, these lenses are uh, important. You will take 5.6 millimeters or eight millimeters lenses. That's all. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, Carl, over to you. Yeah, just, uh, uh, you probably said it, and I apologize for not uh, listening as good, but can every camera 
see some meteoroids every night would you get is it possible or is it only during the the showers and the like that every meter every night but just a field of it depends on field of view you know field of view depends of a lens so if you have a smaller lens you'll have a bigger bigger field of view and in, in this field of view you'll see um, any meter past and it's recorded uh, at that time and after a few hours uh, next day after a few hours you can see it uh, on internet even on even in downtown one one camera can see a meteor well, that's yeah. superb that, that's a that's a big idea you know we're continually yeah. being bombarded of, of course it should be clear not cloudy what? Sacre bleu, Julie. Yes. Okay, uh, I have an, another question. Yeah. My daughter is positioned in Thunders Bay. If I have to ask her to contact, how can she contact you? SM Subhiman. Um, it can, um, it's the best is if you use Global Meter Network uh, site you have a link here and uh, go to um, live chat or uh, go to mailing list or if you want you can contact me and i'll proceed proceed your contacts and all the questions uh, to other people who are uh, who are for that i mean we have uh, groups, and then uh, every special group, every group is for some special group for uh, support when you are um, you are doing your job, uh, connecting uh, all the parts, or when you need um, software support or any other thing. So on the page is contact, so you can use this um contact form maybe this is the best great so i think uh, uh most of the questions are answered christian i i think mirjana already shared a brief budget uh you can also get in contact with her over uh the website and the contact form you'll get many more details about the program and uh, we, I, I think we all look forward for joining this network. It's a brand, wonderful initiative, and it would be great to grow this uh, network as a global network. So best wishes and uh, looking forward for the expansion of this initiative. Uh, thanks, Mirjana, for sharing the website Thank again. You. Uh, and thanks for the beautiful presentation. Um, so uh, we, are, we are moving to the next presentation of this session uh, by Daniel Gracia Fernandez. Uh, so Daniel is going to share about uh, the astronomy education initiatives in mi middle uh, Atlas region of, uh, uh, sorry, uh, ex excuse me. Uh, Daniel is going to share about uh, teaching exoplanetary sciences in high school, secondary education, a guide for teachers. So over to you, Daniel. Sorry for the wrong title. It's all right. It went mind. down uh, to the next one. So uh, uh, would look look forward to hearing your ideas and your uh, initiative. Over to. You. Thank you. Okay. Can you see my presentation? Can you hear me? Yes. We can. Okay. Well, my name is Daniel Garcia Fernandez. Um, I'm going to talk about teaching exoplanetary science in high school or secondary school 